Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter and I am here with lesson number 24 on using the Arduino microcontroller and in the last few lessons what we have been working on is we've been working on making a data logger or a data tracker associated with a GPS and if you remember our circuit is using an Arduino microcontroller, an Adafruit Ultimate GPS breakout board and a Virtua Botix uh, SD card reader writer. And in the last lesson, lesson number 23, we got all this hooked together where it was taking data. And if I took it outside and got a fix, it was recording on the SD card all of the data that was coming off of the GPS. And then we were able to look at that GPS sentence, that NEMA sentence coming off of it, and then we could see that that was showing us our position on Google Earth. And it was sort of like just reaching out and grabbing one of the data points in the file and seeing that we could see it on, uh, on Google Earth. The truth is, is that we've got to pause here and what we've got to do is we've really got to go in and we've got to understand this data coming off of the GPS and uh, this is something that we just got to take the time in this lesson to understand what that data is because we've got to be able to, to move forward in the Arduino we've got to parse the data and in order to parse the data we've got to kind of understand what it is and what it, uh, what it means. Uh, the challenge is, is that it is it's pretty confusing and most of the things that you do in the high-tech world, everybody kind of talks together and plays together nicely, like, like the computer talks to the printer and the, the email works and, and everything, you know, the, 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 you know, everything works together well and plays together well, but it's kind of, it's kind of a different world when you get into these GPS. It's just it's like, everybody speaks a different language and everybody is using a different file format and there is just a dizzying array of different formats. And so it turns out to be kind of a challenge is that you know, it's just like in a few minutes we can get this GPS hooked up and hooked up to the Arduino and we can get it streaming data at us but it's a whole different thing to get that data into a format that like let's say we want to do something like create a track on Google Earth that tracks where we are or for my case where I'm working on high altitude ballooning, what I want in is real time to display on a Google map uh, where we are and you know this would be on a balloon is going very high up you know right up to the uh, to the edge of space and to be able to create a live track on Google Earth with that. It's doable and that's the direction we're going but in order to do it the sort of step that we have to take here is we have to understand what those uh, those uh, that data coming off of the GPS means and what we have coming off of the GPS let's just uh, come and just look at it that if we just went and hooked this GPS up and looked at the data coming off of it you're likely to see something like this where you have a lot of dollar signs and characters and then just a whole bunch of numbers <coughs> on this one you can see that I got a bunch of commas in this and that that's because I'm uh, just sitting right here with it on my desk and it doesn't have a fix and when it doesn't have a fix it's just basically spitting out empty NEMA sentences and I pronounce it NEMA it's N-M-E-A these are N-M-E-A and, and, and the terminology is NEMA sentences come off of your GPS okay the thing that gets confusing is there's a whole bunch of different types of NEMA sentences and the first characters that you see on a line first of all one line is one NEMA sentence. There are different types of NEMA sentences and the type of NEMA sentence is indicated with this first group of characters and so this is a GP RMC NEMA sentence. This is a GP GSA NEMA sentence. This is a GP <coughs> VTG sentence. So you can see what uh, is confusing right off the bat is there's a whole bunch of different types of NEMA sentences. The good news is is that the first thing that I will tell you is almost all of the data that you will need is contained in two NEMA sentences. The two NEMA sentences that you are concerned about is the GPGGA sentence and the GP. RMC sentence and a lot of times these are just called the GGA sentence and the RMC sentence. A whole lot of information is in the RMC sentence and then there's a couple of things though that you need from the GGA sentence. So the first thing when you're working with a GPS is, is that if there is an option to turn off all this other nonsense 
turn off all the other nonsense. And so what you want to do is if you can program your GPS to give you just those two sentences, program it to give you just those two sentences. If you can't turn them off, then when they're coming in, just ignore them. Let me see if I can find a uh, example here of uh, our program from the last lesson. Where we were, uh, where we were, we were working with uh, this uh, Adafruit sensor. I believe this might be it. On this Adafruit sensor, <clears throat> GPS sensor, it was this line here that we sent this command to the GPS and the void setup. If you've got a different unit. I can't help you, you're just going to have to jump into it. If you want to follow the sequence of lessons, please, it'll make it a whole lot easier if you, if you develop, if you, uh, if you get the add a fruit, uh, add a fruit sensor. <coughs> but if you look here in the void setup on Arduino, if I send it this command, gps.send command, this PTK, uh, PMTK set NEMA output, and then you see I have RMC GGA. What that is telling the yes is to only send me the RMC and the GGA sentences and don't send all this other nonsense and so it's a lot easier when you turn off all these other ones okay so now life's a lot simpler we have two sentences point now is how do we make heads or tails out of all of these numbers they're very confusing so let's take the most important sentence and the most important sentence is the RMC sentence and let's break it down okay uh, in fact let me uh, let me see if I can kind of zoom in on this alright I want to zoom in here for a minute okay so if you look at it the first thing is the dollar GP RMC what is that that is telling me what the sentence type is on that line and it's an RMC sentence the recommended minimum sentence and that's really what I want okay that's the type of sentence that I want what is this next thing the next number is 1945 30.000 that simply is the universal coordinated time and it's called UTC and that would be it's 19 hours 45 minutes and 30.000 seconds and if you know what time zone you're in it's very easy to convert from UTC to your time Google it it's very easy to, to there's tables all over the internet that show you how to convert from that but you can see it's like a 24 hour time so it's a 19 hours 45 minutes 30 seconds very 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 easy what is next this letter you will have here a letter A or you will have a letter V if you have a proper fix and are getting proper data, this will be an A for active. If you don't have a fix or something's wrong, this will be V for void. And if you're sitting looking at this sentence uh, in your software, in your program, you can be checking on that. You need to be seeing that if an A, if you have an A, everything's good. Okay, now let's get to some real data. This number, 3051.8007, is your latitude, okay? But it is a goofy format to tell you latitude. And let me explain. The 30 is 30 degrees. The 51.8007 is the minutes. And what you just got to remember is, is that there's 60 minutes in a degree. And so if I have <coughs> 51.800 seconds, that's almost another degree. And so this would be almost like 31 degrees. But instead of saying something like 30.9 degrees, they give you 30 degrees and 51.8007 uh, uh, minutes. So we'll deal with that a little bit more into how to break that down and parse it in a minute because we got to get it into some. I, I like to get things into Google Earth, so we got to get this thing wrapped around in a way that Google Earth will recognize it. But for now, just in your mind, know that this is 30 degrees, 51.800 seconds, and the N means you're in the northern hemisphere, and that's very important.
we'll talk about how to how to deal with that in a minute. Let me uh, let me say a little bit uh, a little bit more here. When you're parsing this, you've got to be really careful because you can't just say, okay, let's take the first new two numbers and let's call that degrees. Because depending on where you are, there might just be one character for degrees or there might be three characters for degrees or two characters for degrees so when you're you know because you could you could be at a, a you could be at a latitude of 2 degrees you could be a latitude of 220 degrees or you could be a latitude of 200 degrees and so this will be one two or three characters <clears throat> but what is always true is this decimal point and these two numbers are always minutes so you come to the decimal point and then you and then you take the two numbers to the left of it and that will be that will be minutes so you go two to the left of the decimal and then you go all the way to the comma and so 51.0.8007 is always the degrees i mean it's always the minutes okay so you remember that and then whatever is to the left of that to the other comma that's going to be degrees and so I'm sorry if I'm just repeating myself but this is 30 degrees 51.0.8007 minutes in the northern hemisphere and you can sort of see the point that I'm trying to make here if you look at the next one this is our longitude okay and our longitude is how many minutes 35.9989 minutes so I come to here for minutes that that is the minutes and then the what's to the left of it is degrees and so our degrees uh, in longitude is a hundred degrees so what you can see here is here degrees are three uh, numerals and here degrees are two numerals but in both cases that is minutes and that is minutes does it make sense what I'm saying I hope it does and so this is 30 degrees 51.8007 minutes in the northern hemisphere <clears throat> and on longitude I am at 100 degrees 35.9989 minutes in the western hemisphere alright so hopefully that makes sense so now what do we do with the next number the 1.49 okay the 1.49 let me come down here because I don't want to tell you wrong. Okay, the next number 1.49 is your speed in knots. Okay, and that's a very useful piece of information. And so this is some pretty rich data that we're getting here. Latitude, northern hemisphere, longitude, western hemisphere, and then this is our speed in knots. That's like our ground speed. So your GPS is moving and it's keeping track of the speed. For what I'm doing with the high altitude ballooning, it is extremely powerful to just be able to uh, go out there, reach out there, and grab uh, uh, grab that speed uh, that speed indicator. Okay, the next number 111.67. Let me look down here to make sure that I do not tell you wrong. Uh, Okay. Okay, that is okay, that is the track angle. And that's not something that I use and that's not something that is really very useful. What's useful here is the velocity and then the next thing the track angle. It's not something I use. It's something that if you really want to understand it, you can go and Google it, but it's not something that I use. All right. So what is this next number? This next number is basically the date okay and here's how this works this is saying that it's the 31st day of the seventh month of 2014 so it's sort of like day day and then it's month month and then it's year July 31st 2014 so you get the time you get the date you get your latitude you get your longitude you get your velocity and so all of that is most of the stuff that you need from a GPS. Now, there's some GPSs that will report some other stuff between these commas. And then this goofy thing here is different every time. It's like a checksum where the GPS is just sort of like self-calibrating itself. It is everything okay? So we don't worry about that. This is the, the stuff that's really sort of golden to us is this stuff in here.
Okay, it's the latitude, longitude, and our velocity. Okay, so that's some very, very valuable stuff. <coughs> that is the GP uh, RMC sentence. Let me talk a little bit more now about what, what do we do with this, this number here. So let's say that we have this. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can copy it down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up to Google Earth. So you guys go ahead and call up Google Earth and let's play with this a little bit. All right. I'll try to get it where you can see it here. It's going to be kind of a mini Google Earth here. So this is where we would put something in the search bar. So let's say that I just come up here and uh, if I got this uh, like this, which was, I need to see if I can get these both showing, at least sort of. Okay, so let's look at our latitude. So what if we just came up here and put our latitude in here? Uh, okay, this is getting formatted text, but what I can do, never fear, what I can do is let me just get it from the NEMA sentence. And so let's say that I came in and I just got this like this right off of, let's get it off C because that's what we've been talking about. Let's get this off the RMC sentence. And I came up here to Google and I told it, see if I can scoot this where you can see the whole thing. I'm at 30 degrees, 51.8007 minutes in the Northern Hemisphere, all like this. And if I just click search, puts me here in Iran, it looks like, or in Turkey, okay? I can assure you I'm not in Turkey, so somehow it is not understanding this data. Let me show you the easiest way to make Google Earth understand portion of the uh, RMC sentence that's coming off. You need to get rid of that comma, and you need to get rid of that comma, okay? And now let's try it and see what happens. Okay, it's still putting me over here, so it still doesn't like it. What it wants is, it wants you to tell it what the degrees are. So you put a space, 30 degrees, space, 51.8007 north. Nothing between the last digit and the N. But you have to have a space between the degrees and the minutes. And similarly here, a space between the degrees and the minutes. And so now let's search. And oh, look at this. We are coming back to the Western Hemisphere. We're zooming in on Texas. We're coming in on the metropolis of El Dorado, Texas, where I teach high school. And if we zoom in, you can see the school. You can see the track and football field. We will <coughs> continue to zoom in. And you can, for that particular sentence, that showed right where I was. Normally, I guess it held the fix for a little while. Normally it doesn't work inside, but I sort of went outside, got a fix, I walked around, and then I came back inside. And it's showing you within a few feet of where I am sitting in the classroom. Okay, so let's go back and look <coughs> where we were. We take the, we're on the RMC, and we come over here, 30.51, we need to put a space between the degrees and the minutes, and then we need to get rid of this comma. We need to put a space between the degrees and the minutes, and then we need to get rid of this comma. And then we at least have something that for a single data point, we can put into Google Earth or Google Maps, and we can sort of see where we are. So that is a really, that's a neat step forward that we're able to make here. But the problem is, is that like when I went outside and walked around, I don't want to just see a single point or put this point and that point. On. I want to generate a track, and I want to see this track on Google Earth that shows not only where I am, but where I've been. And in order to do that, we're going to need to generate a KML file. And I can't 
talk to you about all the things of KML file in today's lesson. We will be doing that in the next lesson. But today, while we're dealing with coordinates, a GPS coordinate, we have to understand what coordinate format the KML file is going to want. You know, the, the Google Earth is pretty forgiving, and if we just put latitude and longitude like this, it'll figure it out. Okay, the KML file is much, much, much more particular. And what it wants is it wants it wants things in terms of decimal degrees. And so if you see here, we kind of got it to the point that I'm at 30 degrees in minutes. It won't, we don't want to hear about minutes. It wants degrees. Okay, so how would we do that conversion? Let's see if I can zoom in again. And uh, let's see if I can uh, sort of show it here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to recognize that there are 60 degrees in a minute. So what you want to do is you want to say, okay, I've got 30 degrees. Well, 51.0007, if I divide that by 60, I'll end up with some fractional degree, and I add that to the degrees. And so let's see. If I take 51.007, get out my calculator, 51.007 minutes divided by 60, okay, because there are 60 minutes in a degree, what I get is 0.85011. And so what I want to do is that 0.850, that's my fractional degree or my decimal degree. So this would become 30.8501. All right. Similarly here, <clears throat> what I want to do is this 35.9989, I want to divide that by 60. So I say 35.9989, I divide by 60, and I get 0 0.5999. And so I want 0 0.5999 added to degrees, and so that would be 100 point. 5999 degrees. So I'm converting minutes to a fraction of a degree and adding it back to degrees. Okay. And if you go through this lesson, it sort of shows you uh, it shows you how to do it. And so let's come down here and look at this. Okay. So I take the minutes on uh, on this one, 51.8 minutes. I take those minutes and I divide by 60, I end up with this as a fraction, and so then added to the 30, 30, point, uh, 30 minutes 51.8 degrees becomes 30.86335 degrees. Okay, and we can do the same thing with the uh, with the other one with the uh, 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 longitude. Okay. The only other thing to understand, so a KML file wants these to be converted to decimals. The other thing that you have to do is you've got to deal with the north, south, east, west. And this is the way those work. Okay, on latitude, if you have a north, leave latitude positive. Okay, if you have a south, make your latitude a negative number. If you on longitude, if you have east, leave your longitude positive. If you have a west, you have to convert your longitude to a negative number. So north and east would be positive, and south and west, or south or west, would be negative. And you've got to convert that because you see Google. Uh, Earth for a KML file doesn't deal with this north and west. Okay, so because this is north, when I converted it to a decimal, I'm going to leave it as a positive number. Because this was west, the longitude becomes a negative number. And so you see, when you do that, you drop the N and the W and you include that information <clears throat> in the sign. So this would be positive and this would be negative. The one other thing that I will say about a KML file that you have to understand is, is that when you generate a KML file, everybody's got to do things differently. It wants longitude first and latitude second. So if you're loading a KML file into Google Earth where you have those 
where you have those <coughs> coordinates longitude first comma latitude <coughs> when you put it in the search bar up here it wants it the other way Google can't even agree with itself here it wants latitude comma longitude and so this one is in latitude comma longitude and the neat thing is is that Google will also understand this decimal degree okay this decimal degree and so let's come up here I think I'm gonna map again because that is just gonna get annoying so if I come here and I put just the two decimal degrees 30.8633 and bodice 100 and then do a search look at that you see it's still you see it's still it's still working okay so you see that's uh, that's that's kinda that's kinda neat that, that the Google search bar will take either one but the Google KML file wants it longitude comma latitude in decimal degree format does this make sense I it does all right we still have one other little bit of business to take care of what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to now look at the other sentence because for things like high altitude ballooning or uh, or unmanned aerial drones which are two things that I'm really interested in working on this GP GGA sentence has some really really valuable information and so let's go in here and see if we can break it down again okay and so let's start here we've got the 194530.000 and you can probably imagine that like before in the RMC sentence that is the universal coordinated time so that's a uh, UTC and that is 19 hours 45 minutes and 30 seconds no problem other good news is we've got latitude and longitude just like the RMC sentence I don't have to go through that again so I'm in the northern hemisphere western hemisphere I do not have to go through that again okay so what is the one the one is or the next number after the W or it might be an E there but this next number represents the fix quality okay a fix of one means you have a fix and a fix of zero means you don't have a fix a fix means that you're in sync with the satellites the satellites are giving you data and you're able to create a valid NEMA sentence that means that you have a fix you know where you are the, the, the GPS module knows where it is a fix of one a fix of zero no dice if you have something other than a one it's like just a little more detail about what type of fix you have on this add a fruit all I ever see is a zero no fix or a one yes a fix so those are the two things I uh, uh, the only two things that I ever see the next number tells you how many satellites you've locked on to for here the more satellites the better <coughs> Four is kind of a low number, not a real good number, but you can see I just stepped outside. I wasn't in a real good place to see the sky well, and I only had four. I only had four set satellites. The next number, 2.18 in my case, is, is called the horizontal dilution of position. It's not that important. It's not something that I use or fool with, but you can look it up if you're interested in it. And this next one is really, really, really important. 746.8. Four. That is your altitude above mean sea level in uh, in meters. So I am 746.4 meters above mean sea level. Okay. Now, if you start getting into what is mean sea level versus what is sea level, you're just opening up a big old huge can of worms. And you can go and you can look at that. But the easy thing to do is to just understand that. For most applications and for most people, and, 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 and you know, good enough for, for, for most things would be just consider this your altitude. I am 746.4 meters above sea level. What, what this next number is, is that where you are on the Earth, what is mean sea level? And that's assuming that the Earth is this ellipsoid and it's this mathematical description of the Earth. And where are you above the mean sea level where? you know where is mean sea level versus that ellipsoid where you are and it's minus 22 and so if you were doing some real real precision stuff you would need to go in and understand what that ellipsoid was and and and, and start dealing with that but for things like the high altitude ballooning or for the unmanned aerial drones I simply look at this as you know simplistically look at it as the elevation 
in meters above sea level. Okay, Some things will give you like some magnetic information in between these next uh, two commas, but my GPS does not report that. And then back to the checksum. Okay, So what did we really get? out of this sentence that we care about. What we got out of this sentence that we care about is, well, I do kind of care how many satellites I see, and so that's something really useful. And what I really, really, really care about is this nice, simple measurement of, uh, nice, simple measurement of altitude. Okay, so those are your two <coughs> NEMA sentences. That's how to parse them, and that sort of gives you a heads up about what Google's looking for. What we're going to do in the next lesson is we're going to develop some software down here that will kind of bust up that NEMA sentences, a NEMA sentence, and start generating a file. I want to generate a KML file that I can actually bring into uh, Google Earth, and that's what we will be doing in lesson 25. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Thinks about think about giving me a thumbs up on this video. Talk to you guys later.